Stan Gibalisco here with the final installment in the complex number tutorial. I would like to explain to you one of the most important and significant applications of imaginary and complex numbers, installment number plus or minus J10, the conclusion of the series. It's a phenomenon called reactance, and it has to do with electricity. In particular, this uh, application has to do with the book Teach Yourself Electricity in Electronics, 5th edition. Also, to a limited extent, Electronics Demystified where I go into some of the same theory as I do in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. Reactants. When you have a plain resistor, like a heating element, for example, uh, in an, uh, in, when you plug a heating element into the wall or an electrical resistor component designed simply to reduce the current flow in a circuit and do nothing else. A resistor, commonly uh, abbreviated R, and resistance, commonly also abbreviated as R. When you have a situation like this, it's very simple. If you have a fixed resistance and you increase the voltage across it, the current goes up. If you have this same resistor and you increase the current through it, the voltage across it goes up. But, and that applies in the case of alternating or direct current, but when you have an inductor, an inductance for some reason is abbreviated L, and so is uh, inductor, the term inductor and the term inductance are both abbreviated as L. When you have an inductor, which is a coil usually, and you run alternating current through it, you observe a small amount of resistance because of the wire in the coil, but you also observe reactance. And it's called inductive reactance. For some reason, reactance is uh, symbolized as an X, an uppercase letter X. X sub L means inductive reactance. That has the property of shifting the phase between the voltage and the current in alternating current circuits. If there's no reactance, the voltage and the current in an alternating current wave go along with each other in phase but in an inductive reactance, they don't. You can also have a capacitor, which uh, comprises two plates parallel to each other in its simplest form with a space between them. Capacitor or capacitance, as you might reasonably guess, is abbreviated as a capital letter C. Capacitors also exhibit reactants called capacitive reactants, uppercase letter X with a subscript C. Capacitive reactants shifts the phase between the voltage and the current in an alternating current circuit. As you can imagine, a direct current in a capacitor, you're not going to have any current. You connect a voltage across one of these things and, and uh, there's no current because there's an open circuit. You connect an alternating current signal across it and it exhibits this phenomenon called capacitive reactance, which shifts the phase just like inductive reactance does, but in the opposite direction. Well, all this sounds a little bit esoteric. I haven't really shown you very much about reactants because I'm expecting that you will have read about it if you're interested in this video. Mathematically, when you have a combination of resistance 
and reactants, either inductive or capacitive, you can't just add and subtract them. Reactance is the opposition that a component offers to alternating current. So is resistance, but they, they work differently. And you can't just add and subtract them. Resistance, you can't add and subtract it simply with inductive reactance, and you can't add and subtract it simply with capacitive reactance, but it turns out that you can add and subtract reactances with each other. Capacitive reactances mathematically are always considered negative, and inductive reactances are always considered positive, <clears throat> and engineers in order to illustrate combinations of resistance and reactance, use complex numbers. And they use a half plane with resistance like this, inductive reactance like that, capacitive reactance like that, and to mathematically model the situation, they use the J operator with reactance. Now what you have here is a half of a complex number plane. Only half because resistance is always positive. You never have a true negative resistance. You can manufacture such things in certain theoretical ways, but generally speaking in a electrical or electronic circuit, the resistance is always positive. That is always positive imaginary, and that is always negative imaginary. So, suppose you have a resistor of 10 ohms and an inductor that exhibits 10 ohms of inductive reactance, then you're going to have a point which lies at 10, 10, like that. And you can assign it a vector like that. If you have a resistance of 10 ohms and a capacitive reactance Well, minus 10 ohms, you'll get a point down here and a vector like that. These are just graphical ways or pictorial ways of representing combinations of resistors, capacitors, and inductors in electrical and electronic circuits. That's just the basic theoretical groundwork for what you will find in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics when you get into alternating current circuit theory. You will learn about how to manipulate all of that stuff and it gets pretty messy. So watch out. It can get kind of complicated, but I did my best to explain it in that book, and also in Electronics Demystified. So, with this little outline of <clears throat> just demonstrating very briefly one of the applications of complex numbers in engineering, there are others, but that's the one that I run across most often. Stangibilisco Signing off.